Okay, so to keep things really simple for now, in this demonstration I'm going to show you how to create an actor, create a method for that actor, create a message in order to execute that method, and then we'll shut down our actor. So this is as basic as you can get, essentially a hollow world example. So to create our very first actor, I'm going to right click your, the target, in this case my computer, go to new, and then actor. Then we're given the choice to give a name to our actor. So I'll call it my first actor. It's going to inherit from actor. And we're given a choice to choose where we save our new actor to. Where you can click OK. So now notice in our project window is created a brand new library. This library contains three separate things, two virtual folders, one for abstract messages for the caller, and we'll look at that in a couple of videos time. The next is messages for this actor, and then we have a class. So an actor in the actor framework is simply a class and the messages that go along with that class. In this class, we're going to create our methods, the functions we want our actor to do. So because this is our first actor, let's just create a brand new Hello World example. So I'll go to new, then static dispatch BI. Now I'm going to right click, put down a string control. And I'll go to wire the string control to the connect pane. And on the block diagram, I'll just save this, on the block diagram, I'm going to put down a dialog box. So essentially it's going to display anything that you enter to the string. So use quick drop to place down a one dot button dialog. You can save that and close this VI. Now instead of calling it untitled 2, let's call it uh, pop-up. There we go. So now our actor has a function. But how do we make actors perform functions? Well, we have to send that actor a message in order to execute the function. So to do that, let's right click the method, go down to actor framework, and then create message. Now in the background, this is going to script that message class. So if you watched my second video, I created these message classes from scratch, but in the actor framework, they're all scripted for you and they appear in messages for this actor. So here we have our new message, it's called popup message dot lv class. Inside this class we have a send vi. This is the vi that we're going to use in order to send an actor a message. If we look uh, behind the scenes on the block diagram, you can see that it simply enqueues a message. The next one we have a do vi. This is what the actor is going to execute. So if we double click the do VI, look on the block diagram, you can see that this is actually the pop-up VI we created earlier, like we can see here. And again, I'll drag, drag that across so you can see they're the same uh, VI. And let's close these and save changes. Sure. Okay, so now that we've created an actor, it's got a function and a message in order to execute that function. So let's create a test bench to try it out. So I go to right click my computer, go to new. We'll just save this as launcher. So to launch your very top level actor, we need to right click, go to data communications, uh, actor framework and launch root actor. I'll place that down there. The actor which we want to launch is the one we've just created. So my first actor, I can click and drag that across. And we'll keep the label on. Then wire the actor to the actor input. The next thing we want to do is wire the send pop-up VI from our message. So we'll drag that across and the output of the launch root actor is an enqueuer. 
So we can enqueue this message, which is um, the send pop-up message. And remember how we widened that string terminal into the connector pane? Well, because we did that, we can now enter our custom string. So let's call it hello world. Now the last thing we need to do for our actor is to stop it. So we can right click, go to data communications, actor framework, and then send normal stop. So the stop messages have been created for us in actor framework. And if we like, we can use a simple error handler at the end. So now when I click the run arrow, we expect the actor to launch it will display a hello world message, if then it will shut down, and if any errors occurred, they will pop up as well. So let's just click the run arrow. See we have a dialog box saying hello world. We click OK and nothing else happens. Awesome, so it works. But just to prove that an actor is launching in the background, we have a debugging tool called open front panel, so open actor core front panel. So let's right click, create constant, and make that true. And now it's worth pointing out that this is a debugging tool only. So you should only use this true constant uh, when debugging your code. So trying to find out if actors are launching when you expect them to. Let's click Control R. So you can see our actor core launched and we got our dialog box saying hello world. Awesome. And as soon as we clicked OK, it got sent the stop message and the actor closed. So I want to go into a bit more detail about what's actually going on here. So when we hit launch root actor, that's going to launch the actor VI. And right at the heart of the actor VI is the actor core. So let's just remind ourselves of what the actor core is. So if we go into the dependencies, VI lib, actor framework, event actor, we can see actor core here. Let's double click that and control E to open up the block diagram. So hopefully you watched my second video in this series where I go through how we can derive the actor core from a Cubase state machine. So launch root actor essentially launches this function here, this VI. Then as soon as an actor is sent a message, like we're sending send pop-up as a message here, the message gets enqueued here, dequeued here at the dequeue function. The next function along is the receive message vi. So if we open this up, notice how we have a do vi. That's the same do vi that we see in our project here. So when we double click this, we expect to see an implementation called pop-up message do. So let's double click. And indeed we have, we have pop-up message dot LV class uh, colon do VI. So if we double click the do VI, you can see the method we created earlier. Like so. And we close some of these. After we send the pop-up message, we're then sending a stop message. So again, if we open up the receive message function, then do, notice how we have a stop message as well. You can double click that to see what's happening. Now this is a key takeaway I want you to have from this video, that actors stop based on an error code. For the most part, they stop for error code 43, which we can see here. Error code 43, stop message. And if we send an error message along here, or an error code rather, we go into the error case, and any error that occurs, we stop the actor. Then we check for errors at the end. This video was all about creating that Hello World example in Actor Framework, where we created one actor 
we created a method for that actor, sent that actor a message, it then closed that actor. In the next tutorial, I'm going to go through um, some of the overrides in Actor Framework. If you want to play along at home, and I hope you do, I'll put a link to my GitHub page in the description below so you can try it out uh, yourself. Cheers! As always, uh, please like, comment and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.